No one is talking about what just happened at the Grammys. Now, if you recall, last year is when they had the infamous Satan moment with Sam Smith dressing up and doing whatever it is that he did. This obviously caused a massive outrage and controversy, which led many of us to say they're not even trying to hide it anymore. So coming across the 2024 Grammys, I think many people were anticipating how are they going to raise the stakes this time? Now, I noticed something that no one is talking about from the Grammys. Some people may call it a conspiracy theory, but by the end of this video, I will show you a hard piece of evidence to support my claim. But before we get into that, we first have to go over some of the moments that went semi-viral from the Grammys. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you are new here or if you aren't new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button as a huge portion of you guys that watch this channel are currently unsubscribed. All right, let's get into this video. The first moment that many people sent me was Jay-Z pulling up polite Kanye and scolding the Grammys over this. Let's take a look. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own tricks, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys, never won album of the year. That doesn't work. You know? So Jay-Z's frustration here is Beyonce won the most amount of total Grammys yet never won the one for album of the year. That would be the equivalent of saying McDonald's has the most amount of restaurants worldwide and being frustrated that they never got a Michelin star. Now the next unexpected moment in the Grammys is when Killer Mike beat out rappers like Drake, Nicki Minaj, and Kendrick Lamar for three Grammys. That's right, three Grammys. Grammys is a 48-year-old rapper. Now, I'm not one to age shame, but I do find it rather suspicious that he ended up getting arrested immediately after winning these three Grammys because of an alleged altercation backstage. Killer Mike won three Grammys tonight, including Best Rap Album. And then this happened. This video from Chris Gardner of The Hollywood Reporter shows the rapper being escorted out of Crypto.com Arena by LAPD officers. Police say Killer Mike, whose name is Michael Render, was handcuffed and arrested after a physical altercation. He was booked at LAPD's Central Division for misdemeanor battery and relief. And that's what happens when a man in his 40s commits armed robbery. Now, considering last year's Grammys were overtly satanic, I think people were anticipating similar things this year. And so all eyes were on Doja Cat, who took her shot at being the Satan queen worshiper in some of her latest music videos. Was she going to perform? How was she going to dress? what was going to happen this year regarding Satanism at the Grammys. But surprisingly, this is Doja Cat's only appearance at the entire Grammys. Doja Cat is here. Doja's in the house. If you haven't listened to her album, you are wasting your ears. One of the best pieces of work that has ever been put out. Doja Cat put out a song, Paint the Town Red. It is a banger about how she doesn't care what anybody thinks about her. Oh, really, Doja? Oh, really? Well, guess what? We think you're pretty great. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I said what I said. Yeah, that's right. Now, that was Doja Cat's entire moment at the Grammys. Someone from Trevor Noah's perspective, who's so great, had that moment. By the way, is she trying to overcompensate with all these crosses on her for some of the buffoonery she did earlier in the year? I, like, I don't know. But what I do find interesting is last year, it was all hands on deck for the Satanism. All hands on deck for platforming Sam Smith and some of the other weirdo stuff. This year, Doja Cat barely got 30 seconds of airtime, and that's it. All right, so I'll get to the chase. Here is my conspiracy theory. The Grammys, overall, was rather uneventful. I mean, with the exception of Killer Mike winning three Grammys, he probably shouldn't have won, and Lecrae winning two, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. It wasn't anything controversial that happened. I mean, Jay-Z complaining about Beyonce not winning a Grammy for album of the year. That's it. That's it. This was like the kids' bop version of the Grammys. This was the G Disney version without all the lunacy and leftist propaganda. I mean, to prove this point, a lot of the major performances were artists like this. Instead of Sam Smith being dressed like Satan or Drake being dressed like an 18-year-old, we got this. Moments of the night, a rare performance from Tracy Chapman, joining country star Luke Combs on the remake of her hit, Fast Car. One of many heartfelt performances, including legendary artists paying tribute to those lost. Oprah even bringing Fantasia on stage for an electric performance for the queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner. And for the first time in the show's history, 80-year-old Joni Mitchell moved the audience to tears. 
as the night's host Trevor Noah presented her with her 10th Grammy Award. And the piano man himself, Billy Joel, debuted a new song, his first solo Grammy performance in 30 years. So a lot of the major performances were people of wise counsel, people who had a crown of silver hair, people who have been seasoned in this music industry. We hadn't gotten anything from anyone even remotely satanic, anyone even remotely gyrating, anyone even remotely doing anything that is slightly suggestive. I mean, they basically sent the grandparents in to take over and teach the younger kids some morality. Was all this because of the backlash that happened at last year's Grammys? Well, this is my opinion. And you may call it a conspiracy theory, but I have some facts and evidence to back this up. I think the Grammys noticed that there's been a shift in society, and instead of decapitating their own ratings, they decided to play it safe. They wanted a nice, uneventful evening where the elites and the celebrities can come together and stroke each other's ego about how great they are or whatever it is that they do at these events and give Grammys to people that probably should have gotten them. Maybe they shouldn't have gotten them, but that's neither here nor there. But let me present to you another piece of evidence. This is a Gallup study recently conducted that shows that Americans have become more and more socially conservative. They're done with all the foolishness and Satan. I'm not saying that Americans are becoming more Christian or more aligned to God, but they sure are shifting on a lot of these key issues that are often shoved down people's throats through the Hollywood elites. This, this study right here shows that specifically 18 to 29 year olds, this is generally Gen Z here, have jumped by six percentage points to identify themselves as more socially conservative in just two years. If you look at the age 30 to 49, that percentage has jumped 13%, meaning that in 2021, only 22% of folks 13 to 49 identified as socially conservatives. That number has went up to 35%. You don't believe me? Okay, let me show you how Americans are now feeling about different moral issues. Uh, this is America's position on if these different issues are morally acceptable. Now, this is only from 2022 to 2023. And look at some of the key factors here. 3% less of Americans see divorce as morally acceptable than just a year ago. 4% less see fornication as morally acceptable. And by golly, look at that number for the LGTV community. They are catching massive L's. Just in 2022, 71% thought that those relations were acceptable, and now only 64% do. That's a 7% decline. That's the biggest decline on this specific study. And so it seems that according to Gallup, Americans are shifting. There's something happening in the culture where it seems like people are just tired of having some of the lunacy shoved down their throat from the Grammys and Hollywood and the elites. They're tired of it. It's an election year. People are exhausted. Inflation is high. And it seems that a lot of these policies and a lot of these things that were backdoor just a couple years ago, people are sick of it. So I'm not saying that the Grammys being a big snooze fest means that a revival is about to break out in America. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that it sure does seem like people in the West are beginning to wake up. That perhaps for the first time in a long time, people are actually contemplating about the word of God that's written on their heart conscious that they have and how it's in direct opposition with a lot of the evil that we're seeing in media and in society. So no one seems to be talking about the fact that there's nothing really to talk about with the Grammys. They seem to be more or less a big snooze fest. Nothing really controversial happened. Is that a good thing? Does this mean that they're reading the cues from society? Listen, I don't know. But I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about it? I mean, do you think that this could have been caused by last year's outrage over Sam Smith? Do you think that people becoming more aware of some of the evil that's happening in the world is an opportunity for Christians to go out and conceptualize the gospel? That we aren't just good for good sake and we aren't just moral agents trying to do the right thing because, but that those of us who are in Christ Jesus have been given new hearts by his death, burial, and resurrection from the cross. Now, it seems to be that society is waking up to the evil that's happening in real time. Now, if you want to see a video of that happening and someone openly changing their mind, check out this video of George Janko being pressed of his use of profanity and making the vow to never use it again. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.